what's up everybody welcome back to my youtube channel and today today is a very special day because as you can see on my desk here it is the rtx 3090 the rog geforce rtx 3090 which is actually hooked up into my wall bc there as you can see with three pc express cables which was kind of a hustle because the power supply that i have at the moment here only had two pc express cables uh, you know integrated into it so i had to go and uh, search for my extra you know modular pc uh, express cable and of course then i found out that it doesn't really reach uh, my video card if i want to you know hide the cable uh, behind the chassis right and uh, yeah it is pretty difficult right now to get any extension cable for myself so that is how it's gonna look for me for quite some time at the moment. Anyway, today I am going to be giving you my final opinion on the ROG 3090, which costs around, you know, $2,500 if you can find it because uh, getting your hands on any video card at the moment in the current world situation right is pretty difficult and um, yeah we're gonna take a look at it uh, we're gonna test some games like cyberpunk 2077 and uh, you know call of duty warzone as well uh, and Grand Theft Auto 5 and uh, yeah I'm gonna give you my thoughts about it and if you wanna buy it if there's even a possibility I'm gonna leave uh, my Amazon affiliate link down below so you can check it out from there uh, but anyway um, let's begin with my quick little review here so uh, first of all I mean welcome to the ultra high end of gaming right uh, this here is the card that is on everybody's wish list. I, I'd like to think, right? If they, you know, could either A, afford one, or B, find one. Uh, as with, you know, any other new hardware right now, it is extremely hard to get your hands on one of these, even if you have the cash. But is the ASUS ROG worth your time and money? Well, 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 let's take a look then, shall we? Uh, first of all, NVIDIA has integrated a whopping 24 gigabytes of GDDR6X memory, which um, sounds totally bonkers, and it will help out when trying to run games at 4K or 8K resolution, right? Uh, the ROG OC edition that I have here uh, also comes in at a slight overclock of uh, 1890 MHz uh, boost clock. Uh, there are a total of 10,496 CUDA cores on this thing and all of this power is drawn from, yeah, three, three 8-pin power connectors. Uh, in short, this card really is a beast. Now, Asus has put their very best engineers and designers um, to work on this card and it really shows. The ROG version comes in at a whopping 2.9 slot sized uh, cooling solution. It is one massive heatsink here. Also, be sure to take some measurements before buying this thing or be ready to, you know, cut extra room into your case, right? Uh, now, as this thing is the top-end NVIDIA graphics card, it does indeed support SLI. But, as it is very hard to get your hands on even one of these cards, um, you know, let alone two, then I don't know when I can actually get a second card myself to do actual SLI tests for you guys. But, if you are rich enough with lots of connections, uh, you can indeed use SLI once more with the 3090. Wow! Uh, now, before we start talking about tech, uh, let's quickly cover some other uh, benefits here. Uh, like the outputs, right? Uh, so the ROG 3090 gives you a total of three DisplayPort 1.4As and two HDMI 2.1s. So you're ready to plug in your big OLED TV and that you know supports 4K at 120Hz without any issues. Now, uh, taking a look at the side of the card, we do find a beautifully big RGB strip there that you can, you know, customize through the ASUS's Aura Sync cap. Uh, it looks beautiful with the rainbow RGB effect, but I, I do need to say that ASUS has to improve their RGB software. You know, they just have to. It still feels like uh, what we got, you know, years ago, and they haven't added anything special to it, so... 
you know, combining effects, multiple effects into one or, you know, simple stuff like that. Uh, to put your RGB into a breathing mode that it wouldn't cut the lights out for one second, uh, you know, stuff like that. I'd really like to see added soon. Now, there is also a small physical switch on the guard uh, where you can basically switch the BIOS to be either in performance or quiet mode. Both modes are really quiet uh, and I, I will talk about that in a second, but essentially one will use a bit more aggressive RPMs uh, on the fans and the other one a little less. So both still give you a very quiet card, uh, but you can, you know, choose between a really, really silent one versus a little bit louder one, right? So the fans, right, the cooling solution itself in its entirety, I mean, it's an exceptional work of engineering once more from ASUS from year after year, they, you know, still, um, it still amaze me, you know, what they can actually pull out from a cooling solution and it really really shows here. The ROG Dirty 90 uses brand new Axel Deck fans that um, have been further optimized to work with the much bigger heatsink than they, you know, usually use and as you can see the middle fan here spins in the opposite direction to the outer fans and has more fins uh, than the outer fans. Pretty interesting approach. And uh, yeah, as with previous generation, it too shuts off the fans completely when the car's uh, temperature is below 50 degrees Celsius, which means a lot quieter PC and it also helps increase the total lifespan of the fans by quite a margin rate. Uh, the heatsink itself also has a lot more fins this time to, you know, cool the car uh, even more efficiently than in the past and use the max contact technology on the you know GPU area uh, which connects the GPU uh, which just you know means that they have polished the area to a mirror finish shine to you know further help uh, cool the GPU core itself and uh, well all of this put together into one heatsink uh, works wonders as you can see from the upcoming temperature benchmarks uh, that I'm gonna run. Of course Asus has not forgotten the PCB design right and has gone over everything to implement the uh, best premium components on it and uh, yeah that about uh, covers all of the hardware specifications uh, of the card right uh, but what about the software side of things right when we actually launch a game what exactly new can we do with the 3000 series right the dirty 90 well actually 2080 as well but you know the 3000 series is even further improved right so let's talk a little bit about uh, ray tracing and dlss that's one that i adore and one that i adore a bit less but still adore so ray tracing a lot of people already know what it does but essentially it raises all the lights uh, in real time and uh, you know testing it out in a game like cyberpunk 2077 it looks freaking insane when you you know turn on ray tracing at uh, maximum graphics and 4k resolution it, it just sucks that uh, to this day it still drains almost half of your frame rate as uh, cyberpunk 2077 already is such a power hungry game right uh, i must say I, I wasn't really playing it at 18 frames per second on average on a 3090 with a brand new rocket lake 11000 series cpu but wait there's more so nvidia also brings us dlss with any rtx card and with the 3000 series they have uh, further improved it uh, so what this does in short is essentially uh, it takes your resolution and the ai automatically uh, scales the resolution down from 4k to as low as like 720p right there are of course options on how aggressively this works in games uh, so you always have full control over it but for me enabling dlss at 4k at maximum graphics uh, brought my fps uh, in cyberpunk 2077 from 18 to 20 all the way up to 60 plus if I selected the most aggressive DLSS mode and uh, well comparing the most uh, aggressive DLSS mode versus a medium mode versus it being off completely, you know, I have to say that it um, does a very good job overall. 
Yeah, the picture gets blurrier uh, the more DLSS uh, or the more aggressive DLSS option you use, but the FPS can almost triple. And that's what I love. Uh, if for whatever reason a game does not want to run over, you know, 40 FPS or 60 FPS, but the game offers DLSS uh, support, crank it on and enjoy almost triple the FPS uh, you had in the cost of image sharpness. But yeah, yeah, I mean, I know you might be asking, well, why wouldn't I just, you know, use 720p resolution in the first place? Uh, well, first of all, selecting a lower resolution means uh, stuff like, you know, you can't alt-tab out of your game without, you know, getting that black screen to switch the resolution most of the time. And secondly, it still does a better job at it, um, and it doesn't mean that you have to stick with one mode. You can, you know, set DLSS to be auto, and it will scale it automatically as it uh, deems fit. Uh, and, of course, the UI won't uh, change as well, right? It always stays... Uh, um, you know, cap to the initial resolution that you had. So that's pretty nice. Uh, anyway, I, I hope this kind of covers uh, the DLSS and ray tracing stuff for you guys. I mean, it's it's really magnificent. Um, I, I especially love DLSS. I hope, you know, a lot more games enable DLSS features so you could actually triple your FPS. Of course, the image here will, you know, not be as sharp, but at least you're gonna be getting really high frame rates, finally, right? That's what actually matter matters, right? And ray tracing, of course, is really nice uh, to use when you actually use DLSS as well, right? Because uh, you can actually get more than 18 frames per second in most games. <laughs> On a 3090, <laughs> which is insane. Anyway, let's move on to the benchmarks themselves and let's check out, you know, how the 3090 fares on the Rocket Lake CPU. So today I am going to be testing this thing out on the brand new Z590E from ASUS, the Z590 motherboard, and on the Rocket Lake uh, 11700K. Uh, so 11700, 11, you know, 11,000 series CPU, right? So it should be pretty good. We're gonna run through Cyberpunk 2077, Grand Theft Auto, um, there's also Call of Duty, Assassin's Creed, so should be pretty interesting stuff. And also, let's check out what the temperatures are gonna do as well. So, welcome to the benchmarking section, and as you can see, my RTX 3090 is in a brand spanking new Z590 system here. And it's running uh, on the Core i7-11700K here, which is a 3.6 GHz uh, that boosts up to 5.1 GHz uh, while gaming. So a pretty good CPU, pretty good Rocket Lake CPU to test this thing on, right? 8 cores, 16 threads, should be pretty good stuff. And before we begin, uh, you know, benchmarking all sorts of video games, uh, let's quickly check out what the temperatures are doing in idle, right? When we're not playing anything, right? Surfing the web or something like that, right? And let's uh, return to this uh, later after we run through all the benchmarks uh, to see where the maximum temperatures uh, went while we were gaming, right? So at the moment, as you can see, it's 39 to 41 degrees, you know, hovering uh, around about there. And if I scroll my mouse, uh, over the line here you can see it you know averages out to some 40 41 42 degrees right so that's the idle temperatures my room temperature is around 22 to degrees celsius which is pretty freaking warm for a room uh, so you might get a little bit better temperature especially when you have a uh, you know case a side case uh, window on here for be better ventilation uh, but anyway, let's uh, kick things off with our first gaming benchmark and it's gonna be uh, Cyberpunk 2077. Why? Because it's really hard on the GPU, it has perfect ray racing options, it has DLSS options, so we're gonna do, uh, test all those things too and see how it goes. So, welcome to Cyberpunk 2077 and as you can see, 4K resolution, most maximum detail possible, without ray racing, without DLSS, yeah. 30 frames per second. <laughs> what? <laughs> How is that possible? Is it a 1090? No, it's a 390. What? There, wait, there wasn't 1090. Ten, it's not a 1080. It's a 390. 30 FPS. What? There's, there must be a mistake. Let's check. 4K, not 8K. Okay. 
no low everything on the most maximum detail possible ray tracing off the lss of 30. yeah <laughs> definitely didn't uh, think about that you know oh my god i mean it looks fantastic right but it's just on the borderline of playable right it's playable when you're using a controller right most you know console games are 30 fps locked right but if you're using a mouse and a keyboard then you know you really need like 45 minimum to you know be able to actually enjoy a game right uh, 60 should be actually minimal in my opinion anyway small story session here uh, let's quickly check out what actually changes if we turn on ray tracing as well uh, you know how much of an fps uh, can we actually lose by turning on ray tracing if we can get off this all right okay so let's go into the settings here again and let's, <laughs> let's turn ray tracing on the psychotic mode right so, so this is now the most maximum detail this game can actually offer us so 4k max max detail ray tracing turned on it's gonna take a little bit while a little while for it to render everything in in real time i really love this and um 17 16 oh, that's a nice booty uh, 15 16 frame what the freak okay i i have to admit like the lighting effects on this bugatti here uh bugatti ray run 2077 looks pretty freaking cool and uh, you know yeah some lights look pretty nice of course our shadows as well you know everything is ray raised now and it does look freaking amazing but come on 18 frames per second i'm losing double the frame rate right i mean yeah nvidia i mean it's a it's an awesome piece of technology but if it you know takes double our frame rate then it still needs some work right but, but I get where they're going, it's a pretty nice place that they're trying to go but not at the cost of double the frame rate in my opinion is the image quality double better than it was previously? I don't think so let's actually hit record for you guys as well here so I'm gonna lose a little bit uh, frames here so just check out the, uh, you know, the shadows here and there uh, the shadows on these light uh, bulbs here you know the shadows from these uh, uh, you know characters walking here right and uh, i'm gonna leave the screen a little bit like this here and now let's uh, let's go and take off ray tracing right and see what actually you know is it worth the double double the rate frame rate right so now ray tracing is turned off immediately yeah the shadows are not as detailed uh, you know it, it looks a little bit like washed out a little bit right in terms of shadows at least right and maybe some lighting effects here and there and the bugatti here doesn't look as clean and crisp as uh, you know with ray tracing right so looks like this right and uh let's go and turn on ray tracing again just just to get you guys a, a pretty good comparison oh, it looks so much better actually but at the cost of double the fr almost double the frame rate i mean it's really hard to recommend right but nvidia has done something magnificent i guess you already know right so we have 17 frames per second the picture quality with ray race uh, ray race graphics is absolutely amazing in my opinion but nvidia brought us dlss so it's been you know further improved uh, from uh, you know the 2000 series cards so let's put on dlss at ultra performance right so there are many perfor there's performance balance quality and you know all the right but let's put ultra performance that's what i used when i played through cyberpunk 2077 at 4k resolution right so ray racing turned to uh, psycho uh, quality and ultra performance dlss dlss let's see 67 63 it's absolutely playable oh my god it's just crispy game but you know what dlss actually does right wait do we actually have do we have no no we don't have ray tracing right no we have ray tracing okay even the sh i think even the shadows a little bit changed uh, 
to, to be a little bit blurry, it's not as crisp and clean as it was uh, without the LSS, right? Look, look at these shadows here, right? these light lighting effects here, right? Let's uh, t take the LSS off and uh, maybe you can, you know, understand better what I'm trying to... Look, it's much, you know, deeper, uh, deeper lighting effects, right? This a little bit more contrasty feel to it, right? And everything, you know, even the shadows look sharper. So what the LSS actually does here, I guess many of you already know, but those who don't know, it's pretty much taking that 4K resolution that we have and downscaling it to something like 1080p or even 720p. But it does a much better job than just, you know, selecting 720p resolution. Also, if we, you know, play borderless mode, we can still alt that without having a black screen, changing resolution, uh, stuff like that, right? So it's a really, really nice technology. I really love it because, you know, if a game supports DLSS and for some reason you have 30 frames per second, right? Then you're going to be saying, oh, it has DLSS option. Let's enable it and we get 60 to 80 frames per second and we can play it. Yes, it's not as sharp as 4K was, right? But it still does a pretty decent job. And now we have ray racing and stuff like that as well. Anyway, this is, uh, you know, what DLSS does and what ray racing does in Cyberpunk. And I mean, yeah, let's actually, let's actually take ray racing now off. Right, so we have 67 frames per second, which is totally playable, absolutely great to play at those frame rates, right? Let's take a uh, ray tracing off. Let's see, because my monitor here is a 65 inch monitor, 144 hertz, 4K, uh, four millisecond response time, uh, Asus ROG PG 65 UQ. I can actually use 144 frames per second uh, at 144 hertz to, f oh my God, 100 frames per second. It's so buttery smooth. You can't really make it out uh, from the camera there, but oh my god, <laughs> it's so amazing. Wow, yeah, so yeah, definitely play around with DLSS and uh, if you have a higher refresh rate monitor, right, try to get uh, near to that uh, cap, right, if it's like 120 hertz or 144 hertz or 260 hertz or something like that, right. Uh, play around with DLSS, play around with graphical settings and uh, yeah. So th anyway, this is how it, it performs in Cyberpunk. I hope this was a pretty good test here for you guys. Hope I covered most of the stuff here. Of course, I recorded everything. So, you know, maybe add a couple of frames per second here and there, right? If I take the recording off, you know, I have 110 frames per second here. It's, it's just freaking amazing, right? Anyway, let's move on to the next benchmark and I'm gonna be a little bit quicker, I hope. So, welcome to Assassin's Creed Valhalla, which is our next benchmark here. And as you can see, 4K resolution rate and the indie graphical settings. Uh, and the other thing is on the lowest uh, detail possible, but everything else is on the highest uh, possible detail. And of course, as you can see, I'm using the 461.92 drivers here today for the RTX 3090. And also the 11700K here also, and BG65UQ, right? So yeah, should be really interesting how well does it bear. So let's hit the benchmark and see how it goes. All right, so 65, 67, 70 frames per second here, a little bit in the 50s, but mostly over 60 frames per second, which is um, not ideal. <laughs> Uh, for a 3090, but still it's pretty decent, right? 4K max quality. Uh, maybe it's something to do with Assassin's Creed uh, Valhalla's engine, right? So that which must be not as well optimized as some other games, I, I guess. But yeah, 60 frames per second. Of course, we can actually get a little bit of a sneak peek of the temperature of the card as well pretty quiet uh, only thing that is doing noise is my cp ventilator uh, which i still haven't you know addressed to put it on seven volts uh, so i could hear the video card better but video card is really quiet at 69 degrees celsius really quiet of course i, I do feel some heat coming outside from here but it's yeah, it's really nice, really quiet. But yeah, frame rate, 60s to 70s, I guess the average will be 68, let's see. 
And of course, you can fiddle around with the graphical settings and um, get to 100 at least, I guess. 67! <laughs> Missed it by one point. 67 frames per second yeah, as average and I mean, it's pretty okay, but I definitely would have uh, expected more from an RTX 3090 coupled with the brand new Intel 11000 series CPU rate. Uh, but anyway, let's move on to the next benchmark and maybe it'll perform a little bit better, but yeah, definitely was expecting a little bit more frames from Assassin's Creed Valhalla and sadly no DLSS option in Valhalla, also no ray tracing option in Valhalla. But with ray tracing it would be, yeah, not ideal at 30, right? <laughs> so, welcome to Call of Duty Warzone, a highly popular game to this day, so a perfect game in my opinion to test out any new hardware, right? So RTX 3090 and the 11700K uh, here should be pretty interesting. And as you can see, everything is turned to the most maximum detail possible. Also running ray racing here as well, but in Warzone doesn't affect that much uh, in terms of performance uh, and it doesn't affect the uh, visual quality that much as well. Uh, but still, it's there to be used, right? So let's do a solo run here and see uh, what kind of frame rate can we expect in a certain spot where I always test out the Call of Duty Warzone? So, made it to my benchmarking spot, and as you can see on the top left corner there, 135 uh, frames per second, 130 frames per second here. Uh, I'm not recording at the moment because recording will take a few frames per second here away, and I have to use windowed borderless mode to, you know, uh, sc screen capture the frame rate too. If you know how to screen capture the Shadow Play FPS in full screen mode, please tell me. But 130 uh, do frames per second here, and let's move on to this side here. 120 frames per second, and right over here is 109. Really difficult to see, 110, 109. So this is pretty much <laughs> what you can expect uh, from Call of Duty Warzone at 4K most maximum detail possible with ray racing turned on. So yeah, total I can almost enjoy maximum hertz from my 144 hertz uh, screen here. So maybe I'll take ray racing off, maybe I'll take a few settings here and there off and you know cap out my frame rate uh, to be in line with my hertz, right? But even at 130, 120 hertz, which this right now is, is super nice, super smooth. But of course, that's that's what you expect when you pay, you know, two to three grand for a video card, right? Uh, anyway, yeah, let's move on to the next benchmark and see how it fares there. Right, so a quick little benchmark of Bath of Exile as well. I know it's kind of an, an odd pick for many, right? But this here is my own all-time most favorite game of all time, pretty much, next to Heroes of Might and Magic and Diablo. But anyway, uh, Bath of Exile, right? 3.13 uh, batch, which is the ritual batch at the moment, right? Uh, the ritual uh, expansion here. And as we can see, 113 frames per second here at the moment, but let's go into the Bastiri Desert, uh, where I actually do my uh, benchmarking for uh, different video guards. Uh, so, something to compare and something you can do at home to compare uh, this system to yours, right? So, go into Vastiri Desert and in the Vastiri Desert waypoint, we see 145 frames per second at uh, most maximum detail possible 4K resolution without any uh, dynamic stuff. No dynamic resolution, no dynamic color grade. Uh, but anyway, everything else, even anti aliasing Let's see, 143, let's take off and tell us, does it uh, give a lot of frames? 149, so let's disable and tell us, right? And um, let's see, if I put window full screen, let's put window full screen, 140, so we do lose a couple of frames, but I'm gonna record you guys uh, this uh, here as well, so you can see a little bit better what's going on, and also see the frame rate counter, right? And let's move around here. I have my general, uh, general scry build uh, with plate glory, which is a pretty interesting, pretty uh, nice uh, little build here. Of course, I'm a little bit over leveled for this content here. I, I can actually do D16 content, and uh, not uh, you know really hard content at the moment because my gems are like 
level 16, but this is an insanely powerful build. It will just delete all kinds of guardian bosses, everything in like a few seconds. Uh, so it is a pretty uh, insane build. Uh, I, I am kind of low on health and stuff like that, but this is my uh, 16 uh, setup here pretty much, right? Um, anyway, uh, leaving that thing uh, out of the equation at the moment, you can see 130, 135 frames per second <clears throat> and, you know, 4K maximum detail. And uh, it's pretty good. It's pretty good, not gonna lie. But even uh, the most uh, the uh, most FPS loss I gained, of course, are the delirious maps, right? But uh, if you go into Valdos Rest, right, and uh, do Harbingers, uh, when I go into Harbingers uh, packs, like there's nothing else that you can see, only Harbingers, right, uh, on the entire screen, the FPS does stick to around 30, something like that. Okay, uh, 26, okay, here are the Harbingers. Uh, 14. 17 and you can see I can still do the map pretty much with this low gear, right? Uh, but yeah, third is oh yeah. I mean Path of Exile is I guess this is why the frame rate is so bad, right? Because uh, the loot that drops is this is the loot. <laughs> this is the loot, right? This is what Path of Exile 2 uh, is gonna fix, right? So we don't uh, get so much uh, unnecessary loot. So that should improve the frame rate right that each mob drops pretty much so that's i think the more uh, monsters we kill uh, the worse the fps will get right so yeah anyway this is how it runs here so what was my yeah level 17 17 17 17 16 16 i mean yeah this this character is freaking insane anyway that's kind of gonna conclude Path of Exile benchmarking. <laughs> so, Grand Theft Auto 5, right? Another uh, game that is played highly to this day, right? Uh, everybody's still still waiting for GTA 6, but who knows? Maybe in 10 years, right? Uh, anyway, GTA 5, right? As you can see in the graphical settings, I'm using the most highest detail possible without anti-aliasing. And um, should be a pretty good test here to see, you know, how far we can push the frame rate here in the test uh, so let's run the benchmark and see how it actually pairs with the brand new 11,000 intel cpu all right 95 100 105 frames per second in the very beginning here all right so let's see 80s okay well it's quite a lot uh, quite a far cry from 144 frames per second, right? But it is 4K maximum detail. There's no DLSS here or ray racing. I mean, oh, some certain spots, 120 frames per second even. But uh, yeah, let's uh, wait for the longest pass, right? The plane ride into the city uh, scene. So that should give us a pretty good idea, you know, what the average frame rate would be actually. Uh, but yeah, 140 frames per second here. Been on this ride for one one time in my life when I went to E3. <laughs> uh, it was pretty fun. Hopefully E3 returns at some point so I can visit it again. It's always always been a great uh, epic journey from one corner of the earth to the other, right? Uh, but yeah, 80 frames per second something here. I mean. Yeah, if I'm honest, yeah, I was expecting a lot more from an RTX 3090, but I'm still 100 frames per second here. I don't really remember what the actual frame rate was in this exact spot on my RTX 3080 that I tested, and I did test a 3070. So you can go back and check my 3070 and 3080 review as well. I think on both of them I did run Grand Total 5. Uh, but I, I don't I, I think it was kind of similar frame rate there So yeah interesting because it is running on the Intel 11700 K at the moment 3.6 gigahertz right boosting up to 5.1 at the moment, right? So 90s. Yeah, definitely was expecting a little bit more <laughs> Still can't hit 144. What, what? Of course we can get you know turn down graphical settings Turn down graphical settings to get decent frame. 
But okay, 100 frames per second is pretty decent. That's 4K, right? But still, I would have expected, you know, this kind of a card, this expensive to at least hit 144 frames per second here. <clears throat> but maybe it might be to do with, you know, how Grand Theft Auto is built up, you know, and maybe there are some engine limits coming into play here. I don't know. Because this card is pretty freaking insane. But yeah, 80 frames per second. I guess the average is gonna be like, 80 all right so as you can see i was wrong it's 95.4 frames per second for the longest pass uh, which was the plane ride right and uh you know driving in the city which this should give you the you know the average idea how well it performs when you're actually playing the game so 95 frames per second i mean it's pretty good it's definitely better i didn't uh, see 90s on the dirty 80 or dirty 70. so 95 pretty okay right but the most important thing why we are going to be ending the benchmark section here is we're gonna be checking where did the temperatures go so at the moment we're you know we're out tapped from gta 5 it's not really running right it's 46 uh, degrees celsius at the moment but the maximum 73.3 degrees celsius which is pretty darn good because it didn't really go loud right it was all the time when we were playing, doing tests, I didn't, you know, hear the video card, you know, going like or something like that, right? It was really stable at a really stable uh, fan speed and didn't go over 73 degrees. So uh, this, you know, cooling solution that, uh, you know, ASUS is using on the ROG 3090 is working absolutely amazingly. So really great job uh, by the ASUS team. Thank you. Once again, you amaze me time and time again, and you improve from year and year on, right? So that's really amazing uh, to see. So anyway, yeah, that's con that's gonna conclude my quick little benchmark here. We can see uh, that the Intel 11700K went to seven, almost the same degrees, right? 79 to 81 degrees Celsius on highest temperatures, and uh, minimum 30s at the moment, 50s, right? totally fine totally fine right uh you know the bigger the cooler the better you know the degrees you get but yeah nowhere near 100 or something like that right so a little bit of a sneak peek uh, of the 11700k here as well but anyway yeah this was the benchmarking section i hope you guys enjoyed it and i hope i didn't leave something major out if i did you know please leave a comment down below but anyway yeah this card here i can definitely recommend Alright, so hope you enjoyed the benchmarking section here. I think it went a little bit too long even, uh, but it is pretty interesting, you know, to do some tests, you know, live instead of, you know, just looking at a simple graph, right? You can look at those, you know, pretty much everywhere you go, right? Uh, but anyway, yeah, I am really impressed by this card. Uh, you know, the build quality is really top notch as with most ASUS cards, right? Their ROG lineup and their top lineup are really, really high end build cards. So I definitely can recommend you guys uh, these cards. And uh, if you're looking for a 3090, if you've managed to find one, yeah, definitely check the ROG version out. You're not gonna be disappointed at all. And um, yeah, the, the, the just, just the main, main thing is you can't actually buy these things because, you know, they're out of stock everywhere pretty much, right? Uh, so maybe check your local forums or something like that. I did see a, not the ROG, I, see, I saw another brand uh, selling at like 1900 euros here in East Europe, you know. Uh, so they're actually going pretty cheap uh, second hand, right? Of course, if you want it brand new, yeah expect to pay three thousand to four thousand dollars right that which is insane insane anyway my final verdict for the rog 3090 is a whopping 9.5 out of 10 only negative things that i can name is you know it's out of stock pretty much everywhere i can't i, I don't know if that can actually be called as a negative but yeah you can't really buy these things at the moment which really sucks uh, and i mean that, that's that's about it i mean i i kind of hate that it uh, needs three pc express uh, you know power blocks to you know run this thing uh, it is kind of annoying you know fi finding a, a third cable uh, but other than that it's a real beast of a card and it is 
you know, decently faster than a 3080, so it kind of pays for itself, right? Anyway, that's gonna be it for my quick little review. Hope I didn't miss out on some stuff here. If I did, you know, leave a, a comment down below in the comment section. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Maybe subscribe if you haven't, and uh, I'll be seeing you soon. Ciao for now.